Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com. And for everyone watching, who shares video on my channel and help support the awesome bands that I feature. And today I'm here with Jen Cap. How you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Doing great. No more holidays, so now I can relax. <laughs> right? It's great to have you on, especially because you were one of the first industrial shows I ever uh, went to uh, with Panic Lift at Don Hills in, I think, 2009. Okay. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I remember that show. That was that was weird, too, because that was like one of those... um. They used to like double book at that venue. And I remember there were people for another show there. And then as we were getting in, they're trying to kick everyone out. And I'm like, why would you do that? Like, let everyone stay. But uh, I, that was actually one of the last shows I think I ever did. I really? Think. Yeah, well. That was one of the first scene shows I went to. So it's. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sorry to cut out like that then. <laughs> so, uh, so what inspired you to come back now after so long? Oh, um, well, yeah, it was like kind of like an accident. I kind of stop just doing this kind of music because i would get like um i guess like option paralysis like there's so much software and everything you make so many sounds you can start a song and then before you know it, you spend like six months just like tweaking something that no one's gonna know the difference but um what basically happened was my entire family got covid <laughs> like in january everyone except for me and so i kind of like locked myself in my office and it was just like oh well what can i do with my time and yeah i just kind of started playing with stuff again before i knew it it's just like oh song's done oh here's another song and then what was it within like six months i already had like half of an album and yeah i don't know i've, I've never been this like dialed in and like focused on getting stuff done so i figured yeah why not try an album out <laughs> wow so it's basically because of the pandemic that you have a new album yeah. then it's like a happy accident <laughs> wow tell us the process of making the album uh well yeah so i had like a framework for like a few so like back then like what was that 2008 2009 like i just did that gemini transmuter album and i started working on other songs but i was like busy because i was uh part of like the aesthetic perfection live show so i would like leave do that tour or whatever come back maybe work on a little bit of stuff or whatever but yeah just never got around to finishing anything and then so yeah i, don't, I had like three songs that I, I started from, you know, just like kind of building them back up. And then, I don't know, from there, just the idea is just, I don't know, I'd be like, oh, maybe I'll write a song next week, which is something I never used to be able to do. And I just like, oh my God, it's, there's one, there's another one. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know, it's a crazy process. <laughs> I can tell you really stepped it up on this album. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, I had no idea what I was doing back then. I, I sometimes I get like, honestly surprised people, people cared about that at all. I mean, yeah, I listened back to it, and all I think it was just like, man, I can't believe I did that. Like, or I didn't filter this out so that it could be louder and things like that. But yeah, in the in between that, I started working on like um like a shoegaze band, and I was doing all the production myself. So I I actually took the time and like learned how to mix audio, and I was just hoping it would translate with this. And you know, fortunately, I I think it did. I mean, I listen, I'm like, man, it's night and day. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's going to be a big hit, the album. Like, uh, most of the songs sound like they could be singles, so I think you did a great job on it. Oh, thanks, man. That's awesome. Yeah, you're. I guess you're one of the first people to hear it. I sent it over a little bit because, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like I figure I only had one song out right now. It's like something that gets weird trying to talk to myself or about myself with one song. So, it's, yeah, you might as well check out the whole thing. Because the album comes out, what, in two weeks? Uh, what's the date? Uh, yeah, about, yeah, January 14th. Yeah, it kind of snuck up on me. <laughs> And then you have an album release show. I see uh, what, January what, 15th you're playing in PA? Yeah, yeah very next day. It, it's kind of funny, actually. I booked that before I knew when the album was coming out. And uh, it's like it's a relatively small place. It's called uh, Coven, like Black and Blue. But I played there with this other band, uh, Eric Vane, I used to play with. And I figured I'd just kind of test out the waters, see what people thought. And then all of a sudden, it just, it's like, boom, like lined up just like that. So I'm like, oh, I guess it's an album release show. So now I'm, now I'm a little nervous. I'm like, people might expect something so <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, who else is playing at that show uh it's just gonna be me um or you mean the lineup or like yeah, yeah. oh lineup so i got um it's got christian carver he's with mannequin he plays with panic lift and stuff like that he's actually coming down from boston to play with me uh i used to play with tim van horn but he's out in california right now and it's like kind of hard to line up but he's still like on the op because i'm going to start doing live shows again i figure if he's out on the west coast it makes it a little bit easier if i just fly out in the west coast and we book stuff like all the way up so yeah for now until i get like a third member too it's, it's just going to be a two-piece for a little bit so then the goal is now live shows then right 
Yeah, I think so. I, I, I've been like, <laughs> I've been just like mad nervous about like, well, every step of the way putting things out. So I haven't gotten a chance to really focus on doing that. But uh, now it's, yeah, it's primarily what I want to do. So I can get out there well, while I can, if I can. <laughs> So what does the future hold? Are you kind of back for good doing the project or? I, I hate to say that because I know I said that like, I put out that single like five years ago and I was like, here comes everything else. And then like, yeah, five, six years just go by. And I'm like, guess I don't have anything. But um, so at this point I have two complete songs and I'm working on another couple. So I, yeah, let's, let's say I am. I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, if people want to look you up online on social media, get your music, how do they do that? Oh, it's a very difficult process, actually, because <laughs> I never took that stuff seriously. So now I have different names for everything. So if you go to Bandcamp, it's gencab.bandcamp.com. If you go to Instagram, it's Generation Cable. If you go to Twitter, it's Dead Man's Bastard, which will make more sense when the album comes out. Um, <laughs> and then what am I missing? Facebook? Gen Cab Official. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what are some bands maybe you'd like to collaborate with in the future? Oh, in the future? Oh, you know, the funny thing is, like, I always used to joke about doing, well, not joke about it, but I had worked with Dan on, like, a couple of tracks, like, back in the day, like, back in the Violent Emotion days, and I always wanted to do more stuff with him, but, like, you know, half the time, I really had no idea what I was doing, like, 10 years ago. <laughs> now I kind of know what I'm doing, so that would be cool. Um, I'd like to do more remixes. I feel like Back then, half the time I'd finish the remix, and then the other half the time I would, I don't know, maybe panic because I wasn't knowing what I was doing, and then just kind of ghost on people. Um, it'd be cool also to to work with. Um, well, I'd, I also like have this soft spot for post rock and stuff like that. If I could work with a band like that, that would be kind of sick. But yeah, I guess no one in particular. It's always like I meet someone, they're nice, and if I like them, we like each other. It happens. I, I'm actually doing something with Morris Black actually now that you. Just mentioned that. Um, he did a remix for me that's coming out uh, on the seventh for one of the songs on the album Taper, and then I just did vocals for a track that for him it'll be released under his thing. Uh, it doesn't have a name yet, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the remixes and collaborations really help spread the word. Oh, you know? for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this old remix actually of Channel the Past that I just put out on Spotify just a couple of weeks ago. I just kind of like forgot to put it on there and just through his fan base it like tripled the listeners that I had. It's like crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I was like, what? Yeah, it's the great thing that you can add the collaborator right on there now. So it, it just really links up everything that you do. It's, it's pretty sick. <laughs> cool. Well, I look forward to what you have coming up in the future and it was good having you. Everybody look them up. Yeah, please yeah. do. <laughs> Cool. For everyone watching, I've linked uh, your music in the video description. Awesome. Yeah, just check it out if you guys want. You don't have to buy anything. Just, just give it a old listen.